welcome or welcome back to Actually Let's Talk About It with me, your host, Lily. And today I will be reacting to ATs once again, but this time it'll be for their first ever studio album. And it's the album entitled Treasure Episode Final or Finn for abbreviated version, All to Action. Y'all, we're about to get into it because it is 11 songs long, okay? And it's going to be amazing. And it's a total of 30 minutes and 45 seconds. And it's just going to be so cool. So let's get into it, y'all. We're going to go through the track listing and the writers and the producers. And then we're going to get straight into the reaction after we do the Patreon shout outs. Okay, so the first song on the album is End of the Beginning. And then it goes into Wonderland, Dazzling Light, Mist. And I believe the Korean name for the song is Ange. And then Precious, Overture. And then when, then if without you, then thank you. And then the Korean name for it is Chingu or friend. And then sunrise and then with you. And then the Korean name for that song. Ooh, don't let me butcher this. It's go rogago iso. I'm walking. I hope I pronounced that correctly, y'all. And then the final song on the album is beginning of the end. So... That's interesting that the first song on the album is End of the Beginning and the last song is Beginning of the End. I love that. I love the play on words there. Yes, so we're we're going to get into this album here in just a moment. But before we get into the album, we are going to do a patron shout out. And the patron shout out does go out to Keisha L. The second patron shout out does go out to MK Han. The third patron shout out does go out to Dia or Dea, spelled D-E-A. And then the last and final patron shout out does go out to Renaya Shannon. And I want to thank you all so much for your support. It does mean the world to me. And also, if you are watching this video on YouTube, do not forget to subscribe to the channel because we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers and every day we get a whole heck of a lot closer to that goal. And also, do not forget to like this video and give it a good thumbs up because that helps with the algorithm and helps the video get out to more people on YouTube. But without further ado, y'all, we are going to get straight into the reaction to AT's first studio album, y'all. And I'm like, ooh, I'm so excited. And so we'll start with the first song on the album. Oh, wait, but I forgot to get into the writers of the album. Okay, so we have our regular writers. We got Eden, we got Buddy, we got Lee's, we got Hongju, and we got Mingi. So they are listed on every single song on the album, except for beginning of the end. Okay, and then we also have the inclusion of Olander or Olander? Um, on Wonderland, Dazzling Light, Precious, Win, Thank You. So he is, they or they are listed on that song. So they appear five times with the writer's credit. And then the producers on this album are again Eden, Lees, and Buddy. And then Allender or Allunder appears as a producer as well. And also Hong Jun is the producer on Sunrise. So we gonna look out for that. Okay, because I'm like, we gonna see his influence in real time on that song. So I'm excited to hear Sunrise just to see what he did there, what he added to the mix there. So yes, y'all, we're going to get straight into this reaction and we're going to start off with end of the beginning. So let's get in to it. Okay. Like that okay so there is this artist um there's this artist named Zane and he used to be a member of One Direction and he is um, British and Pakistani or British Pakistani and he had a song on his debut album like his first album that he ever released called Mind of Mine and it was literally called Mind of Mine it was the intro to his song 
and he did something similar to what they just did here and I was like oh that's so cool because usually the kind of sound that AT just pulled off in the on that first track so that kind of sound is a sound that is very common and that I've heard it done it's very common in um middle eastern or arabic songs that kind of like we i call it like we call it a travail in the black community that's very common in songs made by middle eastern or arabic artists and it's also common in songs made by black artists as well and then it is also common in songs made by indian artists so i'm like that is pretty cool that they did that there and it kind of also had like like it's kind of like I guess in this ver in this terms of how they used it here, it's more like of a war cry because you hear like the boots on the ground, like the stomping mo like the stomping sounds of the boots. So I'm like, oh, it's about to it's about to go down here a little bit. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. But those are just my thoughts off the bat for um the end of the beginning. That that's what I thought. I like that. I really like that. That was cool. They was they was experimenting and I'm like, mm, they did it well. They did it well. But yes, now we're gonna get into Wonderland. Oh, okay. Let's go. Yeah, that was it. 
that was it. Wonderland, mm, I don't want to speak too soon, but it might be the favorite on the album because it's giving very much call to action. It's giving very much rise up. Okay, if you've ever seen Hamilton, like when they said like, okay, even though we don't really support the ideas of like, you know, colonization and um, imperialism, <clears throat> we're going to push that to the side because Hamilton was made by a person of color, a Latino man, and he purposely casted only black or indigenous or other people of color in the film to betray the founding fathers to tell the story of America and the songs that he wrote. And one of them, he said, it was like kind of like the same call to action. What are you going to rise up against tyranny and things like that? You know, even though we know like the truth of, I mean, you know, U.S. history and that that wasn't exactly how it went down, you know, outside of that, it's still giving very much a call to action, a call to arms. It's time to rise up. It's time to say it out loud. It's time to have conviction in what we do and to make sure that we are making a better future for ourselves of what the government is able to give us. So it's giving not, I don't want to say, it's kind of like going into the anarchy era for their storyline, but it kind of is. And I'm like, mm, I love to see it. I don't want to say I'm anti-government. I'm just anti anything that's not for the betterment of the people. I'll leave it at that. Like, that's what I am. I'm anti anything that's not for the betterment of the people. If it only benefits the few and doesn't benefit the majority, then I'm not for it. That's how I am. I'm like, regardless of how much money I have or will get, I'm still not going to be for something that benefits the few, specifically the wealthy, and just forgets about the middle class and the poor. That's just never how it's going to be. So I love the, the nuance there that they're like... We are back it down. We calling everybody to arms. We gonna rise up and we gonna win. I'm like, mm. Cause they even dropped Peter Pan and Jack Sparrow. The only thing with Peter Pan though, is that I think like, in my opinion, Peter Pan was the villain the entire time. He was not trying to help anybody. He was just selfishly didn't want to grow up because he didn't want to res take responsibility. Because that's how I interpret it when I read the book for Peter Pan and when I saw the film, like the old film, not the new, not the live action films, but even the live action films, to me, Peter Pan was just always the selfish man who had the body of a boy. And Wonderland was just the place that he would manipulate children into staying in, but they would die in the real world, but they would still be living in that other one. And Captain Hook was the kid that got away. So in my eyes, Peter Pan was always the villain, but that's just how I thought of that. That, uh, you know, that's just how I thought after I read everything. It just seems like he had very selfish motives in the way he cheated Tinkerbell and the way he was trying to manipulate Wendy. I was just like, mm, some may write about that. But that's just how I feel about Peter Pan. But as for Jack Sparrow, Jack Sparrow was actually a real historical figure who was known for, um, not just like Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, with Johnny Depp and all that, but outside of that version, the Disney version of him, the actual version of him, they are like kind of debating what he was ethnically. I'm like, I don't think that really matters. The fact was that he was a pirate that was known for raiding slave ships and freeing people. And that's how Jack Sparrow became an outlaw in actuality, according to the history on that man. And I was like, oh, he was really badass for his time. He was really badass. That's all I will say. So I thought the fact that they name dropped him, I'm like, oh, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Oh, Dazzling Light. Okay. Let's see. Oh, 
looking. Come on, Mugi, go ahead. Okay, a song going? Mmm, come on. a banger here oh how am i supposed to decide my top three wow they really did not come to play this album because it's their first album and they really wanted to just let you know who ats is and i'm just like and it's working because i think dang near every song might just be my favorite song because what it's three for three right now they're all tied as number one. Oh my goodness it's gonna be hard i might not even be able to decide a favorite they might just all end up being my favorites because what dazzling light the the biggest thing that they like kind of let us in on is the fact that they're saying tell me who you who i am or who you who am i and i'm like oh so they're like i'm not sure if they're like seeing both aspects of themselves like themselves as the pirate time travelers and now themselves as in the dystopian world and if those versions of them, because they're going throughout time, are intersecting with one another to where they're having memories from both or all the timelines that they're going through that they are also present in. And it's kind of causing an identity crisis because kind of like, it's kind of giving like when the multiverse, like the Avengers, I'm just like, I'm thinking of it like that, where you're traveling through time and you're jumping back and forth. Sometimes the memories that you gain in those different timelines can start converging with the memories that you have presently and it can sort of make you doubt which of the timelines is actually the one you're currently in or which one is real if one is no longer in existence because too many things changed to where that's no longer a true lifetime anymore so i'm thinking kind of like in that regard that's why they have those questions and i'm like oh oh because it kind of like reminds me of the same my name when they were looking at different versions of each other like their pirate version or the how it is a version a version and then they were looking at their their selves in the dystopian world and i'm like oh, i don't know that's what i'm thinking right now just spewing off the top of my head though oh and the next song is miss oh what's gonna happen here Come on. 
Like, Mist is very much that one. Now it's four for four. Oh my goodness. Like, ATs. You know, I think every song might just be my favorite at this point. Because what? For Mist, it's giving very much that... I believe that Mist is like kind of a metaphor for doubt and unsurety and uncertainty. And that's like why U Young at the beginning of the song and even in his verses as well was referring to that mist like it was cloudy because that's what unsurety does it clouds your judgment and like uncertainty does the same thing because they're synonyms of one another it just clouds your judgment makes you doubt yourself makes you question what your motives are makes you question what you're doing currently and it's very obvious that this is in regards to the storyline that their characters are on are they sure that they're making the right decisions or they're making the right moves because they are traveling through time they are trying to prevent the dystopia from continuing but are they really sure is there a clear path to that or is this just like the doubt is coming in and that's usually what can happen whenever you're doing something that is a big deal and that could be life-changing you'll have those moments and so i'm kind of glad that they're voicing it as well but then also in the real world perspective as a group there's sometimes going to be that time, those times when one or all the members are feeling that same uncertainty, that unease, and it can feel like it's a heavy, foggy, like instead of a mist, it can just feel like a full on fog. Like you can't see nothing. Like you don't know where, what direction to go, where to turn, where the other people at. And it's just a feeling and it could be isolating in that feeling. So the fact that they're voicing that in song is really beautiful as well because it's something that sometimes you have to navigate through, especially as a young person, in terms of where you want to go in life. And then especially when you're in the profession that they're in and you're trying to make a decision as a group or trying to figure out where you want to go together. And it's just not, the answer is just not coming as quickly as you want it to. Or there's a bunch of like negative 
energy or negative feelings that you're into that you can't see clearly what the what the purpose of y'all all being together is. So it's really deep. AT is not come to play. Come on now, y'all. Come on now. Precious Overture. Oh. I really love the production. Their, their producers be making these beats for them. treasure episode two okay that was very reminiscent of desire okay i feel it i feel it i feel it they tied it in they tied it all together that's interesting i really like that too hmm hmm okay i see what they did here i see what they did here it was very light very fun okay i don't got too many thoughts on that one that was just like a nice tie-in because it reminded me of desire okay but yeah Oh, when? Okay. Come on. Ooh. Verse 
Oh, I can see like the dance break being in the midst of this. Okay. Okay. Ooh. They knew what they was doing here. play with nobody on that one they didn't come to play with nobody on that one there's no room for debate and it ties directly into the story in that they're at the point to where they're like we are not going to lose all we can do is win okay that's all i'm gonna say all we can do is win and it ties directly into their uh, time traveling storyline and that they're not gonna give up like it don't matter what happens like he said if the waves rise up part it okay like if the wind it's too like it's too hard he said we're gonna coast on through it and i'm like like they not let no trials or tribulations stop them from reaching their goal and that's on period that's all i'm gonna say and then also in real life situations i think like if you ever need a move boost this is that song okay because especially when Megan be saying we're gonna win we're gonna win and then that rock the rocky 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 rock part i'm like okay come on now because i don't know why i was thinking of that the little Uzi Vert song, I just want to rock. But yeah, yeah. Like every time that they would say that, like it just reminded me of that similar beat that's in that song too. I'm like, even though that song came way after this one, I just keep, it's like on every other video on my TikTok for you page, it has that song in it. So I was like, that beat, it triggered that. And I'm like, oh goodness, that, yep, that does sound similar. Kind of a little bit. I haven't heard the full song, so I don't know. I just know that part. From TikTok, so I'm like similar. I like that. I like the way that they did it here. They're just amazing. I'm like, ATs came to deliver, and they didn't come to play no games, and they ain't playing. The win might actually be my favorite song though on the on the album. Now, dang it. Okay, and then the next one is If Without You. The win, when is that? Is that number one for me on this album right now? Dang, okay, I finally found one that kind of stands a little bit taller than the rest. Let's see. Oh, I'm in a 
Romantic song. Oh, that was real cute. Okay. I like that one. <laughs> I like what ATs did there. That was really cute, romantic esque song. That was awesome. I like that. But it could also be platonic. Yeah. It really could also. Cause it's seemingly romantic, but it can very much be platonic. That could be just about your best friend. I, you know, it could apply. The rules still apply. It's just like, you know, like it's the world is us. Cause I'm like, it's me and my best friend against the world or me and my best friends against the world. Cause you can have more than one best friend. It's not just one, but you know, I'm like, yeah. And it could also not just be applying to a romantic relationship, but it could be talking about themselves as well as brothers in a group. And I'm like, that's beautiful because when you spend this much time with people and you've been with them since your trainee days yeah it's gonna be very very weird to be without them even when it's just for a short period of time okay i'm like yeah i'm always used to having this person in my space or in my face and then like they're not there anymore or like they're away for a few days and i'm just like where are you at why aren't you here? You know, like, it's kind of like that. So that kind of makes sense. Like, if without you in my life, like, it wouldn't be the same because we have so many core memories. Like, you're literally a part of my childhood and my adulthood and my present day. So it's kind of very hard to separate kind of yourself from these people that you've grown up with. It's just like how in my friend group, some of us have been friends for like 15 years because we've known each other since elementary school or middle school or high school and that's a long time even if we don't always talk to each other every day i'm like just like if they were just to completely be out of your life like completely to where you like just had no contact at all that could be like really really hard to face so i'm like i feel them on that level because i'm like yeah it's not just about romantic it can very much be like that as well when you're in love with somebody, you're like, oh yes, I just want to be around you all the time because you're my world and vice versa and whatnot. And you know, all the cute fluffy things. But outside of that, it could be very much platonic and it can be talking about their brotherhood. And also in terms of the storyline, just their unity and making sure that they stay on this course together and carve the world that they want to like live in and want to thrive in together. I'm like, oh, that's cute. I like that. That's really cute. Oh, and then it's the thank you song. Beautiful. 
to one another oh my god <laughs> that's really beautiful like the fact that it the korean um version of that song name is shingu or friend and the english name is thank you i feel like that's just beautiful like they really the fact that they're just really saying regardless of what we go through we're always going to have each other at the end of the day like that's really just that's it that's it right there like that is so lovely to know you got people who have your back standing with you by your side and that you get to work with as well i love that i love that because you know you can argue you can fight in your friend group but know that these people go ride for me and if necessary they're gonna die for me and so vice versa it works both ways and it's not really no debate about it. I'm like, regardless of what we say, even if we get into little spats or little arguments, at the end of the day, these are people that I can trust. We're not just things that are going on with me personally, but if need be with my life. And like, like when you get to that point where you have people that you can trust, even if it's just one person, that's a big deal. Cause there's some people who will never know that. And I'm like, it is really good that they have that in each other. So I'm like, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And then it can also be as well to a teeny as well. Thank you for being by their side since they debuted it because this was it back in 2019 and I think it had been like a year since they debuted it. So that's just really beautiful as well. But thank you to the fans as well. So it can have more than one meeting. But I really love Thank You. That song, mm, it's getting to me a little bit. Getting to me a little bit. Mm, I love that for them. I love that. Okay, and then now the next song is going to be Sunrise. Ooh, I'm excited. Cause Hong Joon produced it, so I'm like, ooh, let's look into this. <laughs> Mm. 
Mm. They're getting deep here. It's so deep here. I love this. It's gonna be that one now. Sunrise now is taking the number one spot for me. Sunrise is taking the number one spot because what? I mean, it was them saying even if you don't feel like it, I'ma just keep it up. I'm like, ain't they speaking to the choir? Cause I'm like, even when you don't feel like it, just keep pushing. And I'm like, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. -hmm. Because we have similar sayings in the Black community. So hearing them say the same thing that I grew up hearing, specifically like Black women saying and Black older people saying and Black men saying, it's just like such a core childhood memory. Like you got to keep, you got to keep going. That's really what we would say. You got to keep going or you got to like, even though you're going through things, you make it look easy. There is a song by um, Chloe Bailey and she is Halle Bailey's sister. And they are the R&B duo Chloe and Hallie. And Hallie is known for playing the Little Mermaid in the live action. And so she has a song on her album in pieces called Make It Look Easy. And that is one of my favorite songs on the album because she does talk about the same exact things they're talking about. You hear all these di all this negativity about you. And you have all these things going on in your personal life. Like she said in her song, it's messed up at home. And now she's all on her own. And... It's a little bit different for ATs because they're not solo artists, they're together. But even in that togetherness, there's still sometimes certain things that you just don't want to voice out loud. Because sometimes when you voice it out loud, that makes it real or more real than if you just are feeling it internally. And it can be very much harder to do even around people that you know love and care for you and support you. It can be very hard to say. So I'm glad that they're saying like, these are words that I wish somebody would just tell me, even without me having to tell you what's going on in my head. Like, just keep it up, or you're doing well, or this will get easier, or you will be able to do this, like this and that and the third, you know? And it's just very deep. And I love how this one, I don't know if it would necessarily tie into the storyline, but this is giving very much ATs as a group and ATs as individuals. And this is a very personal song, and I'm glad that they were able to ride it and it was able to come out the way it did because sunrise is this is personal for them this is some some real stuff and they're not the only people in the industry who are going through it or the only people in life this is like an every day and every person kind of a thing where you have to just keep yourself going like i gotta do this i gotta do that even though i don't want to like a lot of times you don't want to go to work i'm like i really don't want to go but you know i'm like i gotta keep it up okay like i gotta keep going i gotta keep going 
um, I got to keep doing this and doing that until, you know, something better come along or, you know, and it's just something that you learned how to do as you are growing up and as you become an adult, you realize that there are things that adults have to do that when you were a kid, you never really had to think about. And now that you're an adult yourself, you're saying, oh, I do have to do these things. I do have to do this. You know, you got to work. You got to go shopping. You got to pay bills, you know, like, and a lot of times that can all be like weight on your shoulder. And then when you're in their profession, they don't just have to, their job is literally entertainment. So they're like, I, even when I don't feel like smiling, I have to smile because people are expecting me to be this person and I have to smile. I can't just be sad on the stage. I can't go out there crying and at the concert, you know, like, you know how that's going to look, you know what people going to say, like, what's, are they having a breakdown? No, I'm just being human. But you know how the t media is going to twist that. So they're like, I can't, I can't go out. Even when I don't feel like performing, when they're saying this in their song, even if I don't feel like performing, even if I don't feel like going to this concert or performing at this music show, I got to, I got to keep it up because it's my job and the fans is expecting this and the contract, uh, the obligations that we got, the schedule we got to adhere to is saying this. And I'm like, and that's kind of like one of the, one of the downsides of entertainment industry as a whole is that you always have to be on. That's literally in the job description. You really can't be, it's, you're not, it's not like really allowed. It's getting more lenient, but it's really in South Korea that I'm seeing the entertainment industry, the messing up, the slipping up, they don't really allow that in the way that could be functional if you're going through something. I do know that they allow some members to go on hiatus. Like I do know Minky did go on hiatus for a while due to some personal things that were going on with him. And I'm glad that they allowed him to do that. And I'm glad that it's getting more attention, the fact that these idols are people. And sometimes you need a break. Like you need a break break, like not just a few days or a few weeks, like months, sometimes years, you know? And that's one of the um, odder things about the K-pop industry that I found out. Like I'm like looking at how many comebacks these groups be having in a year and i'm like western artists don't have comebacks like that look at adele i'm like adele she comes back every couple of years if that rihanna rihanna she been gone her last album came out seven years ago i have not heard a peep from her since i'm like miss ma'am where, where you, we have heard from her, you know, I'm talking about musically with songs that like, you know, I know she did Black Panther 2 with two singles and that was lovely, but the album, we have not seen that. We felt like, we know she's doing her Fenty Beauty and things like that, but we haven't seen her. And I think with K-pop in the industry that it's in is they believe, I think these, some of these companies think that if you don't have a presence that you'll be forgotten. And I'm like, no. The heart grows fonder sometimes when you have bigger gaps in the comebacks because that way they can put more energy into the next one. If you just be bombarding them with comebacks, where, where, where the energy going? You know, like the energy going to get sparse. And so, you know, so like I think that that's a hole in the K-pop industry that they need to fix. Like two comebacks a year, one at the beginning and one towards the end to give these artists breathing room to where they're not just overworked you know i don't think that's the case with ats but he said even if you don't feel like it so like you know you be having them thoughts like you know maybe i don't want to work right now but i got to because it's kind of my contractual obligation and i already got paid and i gotta come because you know like that's really it like they're like i'm i got paid i gotta go and that's how it is with the entertainment industry that's why it's one of the hardest industries because you already get paid the money up front and then you have the schedule for when you need to come and perform. So you can't just back out at the last minute and not expect to pay that money back and the penalty for canceling. Yeah, remember. Ooh, y'all, now we're gonna get into the next song with you. But that song was deep, y'all. It was deep. Oh, <laughs> 
끝난 또 지나 내밀은 너 너와 깊어지는 그대 나 낯설었던 그 시간마저도 추억이라고 부를 수 있어 멈추지 않겠다 기억하니 내게 했었던 그 약속 난 여전히 걸어 어떤 어려움이 막아도 지금 내게 남아있는 건 너와 했던 약속들과 함께 했던 행복한 기억들만 그게 나를 움직이게 나를 숨쉴 수 있게 한 시간 이렇게 너와 함께 나 걸어내고 싶어 달라나고 싶어 Let's go. He know exactly what he doing. I'm proud of him. That song was beautiful. With you is oh, it's really like these are starting to become more personal songs. They're not like so much tied to the storyline that they're on, and they're very getting much into ATs as people. Because with you, it's definitely giving the brotherhood again. The and also could be about the fans as well. Just when, just remembering all the good times, some of the not so good times, and the promises that they made to one another as friends and as brothers, and then the promises that they made in terms of the group, and you know, and all the times and all the from debut, okay? Because I remember, like I said, I knew about ATs from KQ Fellas when they were all members of that group before they debuted. I had seen those videos and I'm like, and then they debuted as ATs. So they're remembering all those times from debut to KQ fellows to ATs as a group and all the trials and tribulations because it's not very easy to debut sometimes. Some people never get to and they have to do go into other avenues to be in the entertainment industry. And so it's a lot that they go through together and you don't forget those times. Like he said, the times when we was trembling, like, our footprints in the sand, like just all these memories that they've collected for, I don't know how long they've been together, but that includes the debut years, but that could be a very long time. Sometimes it even outweighs how long they've been out as a group for how long they've known each other before de they debuted. So I'm like, yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a big deal. And it, it holds a lot of weight 
So sunrise and with you right now, neck and neck. And then when, of course, it's a third option, but so far sunrise with you and then when for me in this album, it's really, it's really setting the tone, really setting the tone. Oh, now we have the last song, beginning of the end. Oh, wow. Okay. And this album went by fast. instrumental, I'm not gonna lie, that's a really nice instrumental. like a teaser i feel that okay okay let's go ahead that is really nice i love that i really do that is so cool that is so cool so that was really the end for treasure episode final all the action their first studio album yo they had so many great fantastic songs in the intro and outros that they did phenomenal but my favorite songs have to be like i said before i'm gonna say it again it has to be like sunrise and also with you and then also thank you as well because i forgot about that and win so i have like four top ones so it's sunrise with you thank you and win in that order those are the top four songs on this album for me and everything else is an honorable mention okay but i really love those four songs I feel like we got to know more about ATs as a group, as individuals as well in this album, because the other three EPs were focused on the storyline. This one was focused on a little bit of the storyline and then ATs as a group, especially in the latter songs. And I really loved that, that they got to say how they felt, how they got to share their emotions with us as a teeny, and that we just got to hear what they have to say. And, you know, I appreciate how far they've come and how steadfast they've been in chasing their dreams and staying with us as a group because that's a big deal. Y'all, I love this album though. I really love this album. It's really fantastic. Oh, okay. I I really like this and I really loved it. Like there, I don't have no other words to really say. And I'm gonna have to be back with part seven relatively soon because this it's just gonna get better and better. They keep raising the bar for themselves every time. So I'm I'm really loving it. I'm really, really loving it. I I'm excited to hear more from them. So yeah, y'all, I'm I'm really excited to hear more. But that is my reaction to AT's first studio album. So Treasure Episode Final. I love that. This is this is amazing, y'all. And if you have stayed until the end of the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. This video might be a bit long, but I'm going to try to cut it out for YouTube just because it is 11 songs and it is a full album. So I will try to snip it as much as I can just so it won't be too long of a video, but it will still be my reaction to it. And y'all, it's going to be good though. I'm going to just get it edited up a little bit so it'll be a little bit shorter because it's very long. It's over an hour long in length as of right now so i'm gonna have to 
snip it up and then to cut some things out okay for the youtube version just to not make it too long of a video but y'all you will see that relatively soon or you are watching it now on youtube but yes and i want to thank you so much if you are watching on youtube and you are a subscriber thank you so much for subscribing if you have yet to subscribe and you're watching on youtube do not forget to subscribe to the channel because we are on the road to 400 subscribers and every day we get a whole heck of a lot closer so don't forget to do that and also don't forget to give the video a good thumbs up because that helps with the algorithm and helps the video get out to more people and then if you are watching this video on patreon i want to thank you so much for being a patron your support is so very much appreciated and y'all until next time i will be back with another at's reaction or another tv show reaction or another music video reaction relatively soon but i will see you on the next video bye <laughs>